सहज स्ते नेचुरल इन मी एफर्म्स नेचुरल इन यू yesterday we talked about how important it is to have a stable healthy ego and identity which is contrary to all spiritual teachings and traditions because everybody wants to go beyond their ego beyond the world not realizing that they didn't find a place in the world so lot of these teachings systems become an escape mechanism because ego is not healthy and mature they want to bypass it so they escape or take shelter in a system in a guru in a philosophy in practices meanwhile they still long for ordinary things of life which they try to bypass and they become victim of those desires unfulfilled i still remember one or two friends somehow their life was going through turmoil they were not able to settle in ordinary life so they became deeply spiritual totally merged into it i thought wow but after 2 years as soon as they got their partners everything disappeared it was merely a filling mechanism a temporary escape from their loneliness there was no true search but there is a problem happens here that quite often this identity becomes a trap because our ego our identity is borrowed from our family society and culture it truly doesn't belong to us and the reason it is a particular problem in humans because fundamentally we are cultural beings and why we are so because human child needs an extended protection and care up to the age of 25 years because frontal part of the brain which is responsible for physical independence is not mature yet and we have a very special brain cells called mirror neurons mirror neurons reflect other people's behavior our parents our siblings friends and relative and we imbibe their behavior whatever they do and that forms our identity but later on this identity becomes such a part of our daily living our nature that we forget it doesn't belong to us and many people never come out of it they identify with whole borrowed persona and that is a tragedy because then we never discover who 
we are. We never become emotional adult. It's so easy to become a physical adult because if we are fed, given shelter, clothing, we automatically become a physical adult. But to Im become emotionally adult is a very difficult task because once we achieved our identity or a healthy ego, then we have to look beyond into who we are. Because at the time of birth, nature gave us our unique life force, our unique personality, personal intelligence. Identity is social intelligence. And after that, in order to become emotional adult, I have to discover my personal intelligence. And again, what is the meaning of emotional adult? Emotional adult means when I'm not seeking shelter in parental figure, in figures like my mother or father. They were very relevant, they were very important up to a particular age, say, 20 to 25. But we become dependent on them emotionally. So even if we leave our parents, we are working elsewhere. We are settled in our own household with our partners. Still inside, we are dependent on father and mother figure. Physically adult and how that desire for mother and father figure is fulfilled by seeking shelter, blessings of gurus, political leaders, corporations, institutions, grand philosophies. Because still we don't feel emotionally, psychologically secure. Because this dependence was quite long. So we become followers. And the fact is, if we follow others, we will miss ourselves. Because usually a follower is blind. He or she doesn't have his or her own eyes. They see the world through other people's eyes. So whatever others will say, they will follow. So they remain emotionally dependent. Means emotionally child. There is no harm in learning. So learn, but don't follow. But the question is, how to break that whole emotional, psychological dependence on others? To discover a mother and father inside us. Discover a guru within us. That is why on a spiritual path, millions walk. Why so few people reach the destination? Because still they are hoping somebody will give them a magical sentence, a magical practice, a magical, miraculous blessing, and they will become free. And of course, other side take the advantage because they need loyal followers. Once they are gone, this person didn't even move a bit 
except few practices, some philosophy, some codes, they are left like orphans. Because they didn't realize they have to open the book of their life and read. Because that book contains, because that is the part of our mind and body that is given to us by nature. So, if you follow others, you will miss yourself. To learn from all sides is great, but learn, don't follow. Becoming emotionally adult is a great milestone on the journey of our life to live a full, vibrant, creative life as well as progress immensely on our spiritual path. So open the book of life and start reading it. It contains all that which must be known, which must be followed. To become psychologically independent. Of course we need technical knowledge from outside. Knowledge of medicine, knowledge of engineering, knowledge of zoology, botany, all kinds of sciences and humanities. That is external knowledge as far as the knowledge of life is concerned. Nobody can give us. Only we have to discover. And for that, we have to enter into ourselves. We have to find that little vibration, that little voice, that little which is our own and which was buried underneath our social, cultural and family structure. We have to become our own followers. We have to become our own father and mother and children. We have to become our own guru. Out of that will come a discipline which is natural discipline it will be so easy to follow because we will be totally aligned with it. That is why Ayurveda is called science of life. That is the literal meaning of it. And it is so deep, it is so profound. Why? Because it is saying Ayurveda that you can understand yourself by certain fundamental knowledge, some initiatives. And Ayurveda gave one of the most profound insight, what is called Prakriti, my mind-body constitution my personality, my personal intelligence, my dosha. Some people call it dosha. I will call it natural personality or personal intelligence or personality. Because whatever personality I have in the beginning is not mine because I just put it in order to connect to a culture, society or family to get reward, to be accepted. But now the time had come, I have to know myself. Knowing my mind-body personality is the first great realization. Before we start on 
path of yoga. Great sage Kapil, he gave the most profound teachings in human history is called Sankhya. Even Buddha teachings were deeply influenced by it. He enumerated all the factors which constitute this whole universe. And out of that came two great systems, system of Ayurveda and system of Yoga, Patanjali's Raj Yoga. But before I go into this yoga, I have to know what kind of personality I have. Because one size cannot fit all. It has to be customized. It has to be individualized. But what happens when I am following a teacher or a guru I am following others, my culture, my Gita, my scripture. They don't give us the idea of my personality. So Ayurveda is very clear. Because once I know my personality, my personal intelligence, I know how much to sleep, the whole of my lifestyle, how much to exercise, what to eat, what kind of partner is good for me, what kind of work, house, hygiene, what kind of clothes, what kind of yoga, what kind of meditation, what kind of pranayama. So knowing my personal intelligence, my personality means I discovered whole of my lifestyle. Because lifestyle which we follow is not ours. It is the demand of external world. So my sleep, my exercise, and a million things, my work. It doesn't come from the heart, from myself, from my mind, body. But once I'm able to discover my personality, I will start making changes. Because once I make those changes, I will be aligned according to the natural rhythms of my body and mind. Then I am not fighting with myself. I am not in conflict with myself. Then life will become like a river rather than a puddle which becomes stagnant. And when I am flowing with the rhythms of my mind and body, then what will happen? I will become creative because then my energies are meeting, they are uniting instead of conflicting. Because there is a tremendous conflict who I am and what the world expects. So when I enter into my personality, when I start noticing that little voice in me, little vibration in me, my original life force, there is the experience of what great psychologist Mihai calls flow. My life becomes flow rather than turbulence all over. Do we understand that? But most people, they struggle. Why they struggle? 
because they are working against their nature. So they cannot succeed, they cannot achieve excellence in this life. So I'm talking about not only spirituality, but success in this life. People who reach absolutely the top, whether they are political leader, they are businessmen, they are actors, they are writers, they are musicians, or very ordinary people, if you really look into their lives, they are experiencing state of flow. Because in the state of flow, their energies are synthesizing. They are not working against them. So a lot of people write about the lives of the successful people. Ten lessons from the li lives of great people. They miss a point. We cannot imitate them, no matter how great they are. But we have to follow ourselves. And that is the whole personal intelligence is about. Discovering my own personality. Once I form identity and healthy ego, which I borrowed from society, so I could find my place in the world. Now I have to find my place within myself. I found a home outside. Now I have to find a home within because that is truly the journey of success, excellence, creativity, and spirituality. And in Ayurveda, this is called dosha, natural personality. And what it is, that based on five elements, they divided into three fundamental personalities called Vat, Pit, Kaf. We can call them wind, fire and earth. All of us have all personalities but one of them is dominant. And what that means? That means if I really want to live a balanced life, a happy life, a healthy life, I have to allow, I have to facilitate the expression of the dominant personality. Balance doesn't mean all three personalities are completely equal, 33%, 33%, 33%. No. One of them is going to express itself more and other two will help in expressing it. Because as uh, I mentioned earlier that each one of us is unique. Uniqueness will not be there if everything is in symmetry. Life is asymmetrical. Life is not a garden. Life is a jungle, a forest. So I have to understand that one particular one will dominate and slowly when I follow it, I take the help of other two. So it will be fully expressed in the world. That means I'm following myself, learning from all sides. And if I follow a natural discipline, a natural will will emerge. And also I will have relentless effort and energy because I'm not fighting with myself. I'm not wasting my precious life force. And when I'm in touch with this personality of mine, about which I cannot go in detail, I'm just introducing the concept, then I will experience flow. What are the signs of flow? How I will know I'm living according to, to, to my personality? The experience of flow is, there is a sense of joy, rapture, 
exuberance. Mind is focused. Mind is creative. Voices in the head from the past are quiet. And also we are not thinking of future. A total attention. And in those moments we are breaking the boundaries, old boundaries of our traditions and customs and systems and going into a new realm, new dimension of our being, which is the hallmark of creativity. In those moments, we become very simple also. And in that simplicity, we bring all pieces of our life together. So those moments, if we are experiencing, and actually we experience time to time, certain days we say, oh, day was such a joy. It was just flowing. I was gliding through it. If those moments are there, you must be sure you will you are in touch with your personal intelligence. Now a door is opened. Now we are discovering our own powers, our meaning in life, our purpose in life. Still the journey is incomplete, but it is started. And at that point, slowly, we are becoming emotional adult. Because when so much energy is produced from inside, unleashed from inside, we don't depend on external world for our self-esteem, our self-worth our self-value, all that self-worth, all that self-value now comes from inside. We are becoming psychologically, emotionally independent. As we know, life of creativity, life of fulfillment is the journey in aloneness, not loneliness. And that aloneness is when I'm not cluttered with a million things, with thousands of people. There is no crowd anymore because it's all inside that space is created. And anything which is beautiful in life needs a space. Love needs a space. Creativity needs a space. And so spirituality. Because once this is space created, this ground, out of this ground will sprout the seed of my potentiality and a very delicate plant will emerge with a beautiful flower. And that beautiful flower will contain perfume of my life. But for that, I have to move, I have to follow myself, what is called dosha, my personal intelligence, my personality. Because only this little plant, this little sapling, this delicate, fragile one will grow into the mighty tree then I will become an emotional adult, no more depending on external figure for my emotional security safety. Then I become an individual. If we have to come to full spiritual realization without that independence, we cannot no matter how powerful in body we are, it doesn't matter how much knowledge we have, 
how many degrees we accumulated because creativity and spirituality both are about life force life's original energy which i have to unblock by opening the door to myself and there is only one way it is not somebody else's blessing or following but following myself opening the door to my life and reading the book of my life and when that happens something as will start taking over and i will be on my path but what will happen after this because we covered healthy ego healthy identity and now i entered into myself but much more to come it is just the beginning the beginning of creativity and spiritual journey it is going to come to the full fruition and that is what we are going to explore in coming sessions so that you understand levels and stages a full system a full system which you have and that full system will guide you then you will learn from all sides and vedas said let the knowledge come from all sides by integrating that knowledge making it wholesome from information to the transformation that can only be done through you and you only that is the demand of the nature that is how the divine or sacred waits for but that for in coming days sahajaste and now if there is any question any comment i will be happy to answer them respond to them any question personal impersonal connected with anything so if there is no direct comments uh, you can post your comments uh, after this uh, uh, live session is over and i will be happy to to respond to them in some details thank you very much again attending this live session and we will meet again tomorrow